I purchased one of these cheap little digital microscopes and I've just been looking at all sorts of different 3D printed stuff. And it's really cool to be able to see your printed parts up this close. I was kind of curious what carbon fiber filament looks like under the microscope. So let's take a closer look here. If we look at a broken end of this filament, you can actually see the individual carbon fibers sticking out of the material. And there's a bunch of bubbles on the inside too, which is kind of interesting. I can zoom in even more and get a super close look at what's going on with this material. And I was thinking, wow, that would suck if these got stuck in your skin or something. So I decided to take a look at my hands and I noticed there's these little bits of carbon fiber embedded into my skin. And that's just from handling the filament. Six hours ago, I was playing around with this and I've washed my hands several times since then and it's still in there. And this part of my hand looks relatively clean. What I'm going to do is just rub this filament back and forth over my hand a couple of times. And just like that, we've got some new spots there. And you can see the little pieces kind of sticking off the side here. Those are the little bits that get stuck in your skin. Jeez, they're all over the place. But yeah, I mean, just look at it. I'm going to try and take this file and just kind of scrape the surface of my finger here to see if this comes off. It doesn't seem to want to come dislodged. I'm going to take some uh, water and see if I can rinse it off. That's just in my skin now. Okay, so I now have some little bits of carbon fiber in my skin. People need to know that these filaments aren't necessarily the safest things to be handling. But probably the more important question is, do you really need to be using carbon fiber reinforced filaments? If you actually look at the material properties, it's not really providing that much additional strength, at least in the case of carbon fiber PLA, but that's coming at the cost of exposing you to a potentially harmful substance. You're not going to want to use it in areas where it's touching your face or touching your hands or prosthetics or cosplay if you're wearing them and they're directly touching your skin. For the stuff that I got on my hands, it's probably not going to be that much of an issue. You shed your skin every couple of months, ideally that carbon fiber will just come off with your shed skin. But, you know, what about your lungs? What about your more sensitive areas with skin? Like, what if you're handling carbon fiber and then you go to the bathroom and, you know, uh, you don't want to be touching things and embedding carbon fiber splinters into them. The really concerning thing to me is that carbon fiber reinforced plastics have become kind of this thing that a lot of people strive for and they want to have and use, even when the situation doesn't really call for it. If you're making children's toys, that's like obviously going to be a bad thing. If you're making tools that you use with your hands, every time you pick that tool up, you're going to have to worry about getting carbon fiber splinters in your hands. A lot of people like to print out little pill containers or little hidden stash containers. And I know what you kids are hiding in those hidden stashes. You don't want to expose that stuff to a contaminant where it's going to later be ingested. If you don't believe anything that I've just said and you just think that I'm pushing some sort of anti-carbon fiber agenda, you don't have to believe me. You can pick up one of these small microscopes yourself. I'll leave links in the description below. For as little as $40, you can probably get something that's capable of seeing these little fibers. If you know anyone who would find this information useful or if they're handling a lot of carbon fiber filaments, please forward them this video. It's something that I think the 3D printing community gets wrong a lot of the time. There's little to no focus on health and safety. These are serious machines and serious materials that you should at least know what you're dealing with when you start your 3D printing journey. I know carbon fiber nylon and carbon fiber reinforced PLAs can be tempting, especially that they're coming out in all these new colors now. But in my opinion, it's just not worth the risk to be dealing with those materials when you have perfectly acceptable materials like PETG and PLA that are non-reinforced that'll get the job done for 99% of your applications. And if you like the work that I'm doing here on my channel, consider supporting me on Patreon because it really helps cover the costs of doing all these crazy experiments that I do. I doubt the 3D printer manufacturers or filament manufacturers are going to be super pleased to hear about this type of issue. Having support from you guys in the audience really helps me to be able to afford new equipment like this, like this microscope, that really enables me to do these deeper dives and investigations into 3D printing. Videos like this are why Nathan Builds Robots is considered the definitive source for 3D printing news. So there's two main classes of carbon fiber reinforced composites. This is kind of the, the type that we really like in engineering. This is a woven sheet of carbon fiber that's pressed into a mold. 
and then injected or filled with epoxy. That is cured so that it solidifies into a really solid part. Basically you've got these long continuous strands of carbon fiber running the entire length of the part that are adding a bunch of extra strength and stiffness. If you have long continuous fibers in the filament, then it's going to kind of get tangled up and mess with the extrusion process in general. So what they use is instead of long continuous fibers, is they use short chopped fibers. And you can see them under the microscope. They're probably about half a millimeter long. They add millions or billions per kilogram into the material. And the thing about short fibers is they're not even as mechanically advantageous as these longer fibers are. The way that I like to explain composites to people who haven't thought about it before and how a short fiber that doesn't run the entire length of the part benefits the strength of a material is you can think about it like this. So let's say you had a part and you pulled it until it broke and you're like, wow, that broke at a certain strength level. Then let's say you added a bunch of tiny little holes into the part. Like even if they're really small and microscopic, and then you pulled it until it broke. All those little holes are gonna reduce the strength of the part because where there's no material, it can't carry any of the stress that you're introducing into the part when you pull it. These short carbon fiber reinforcements are like tiny little anti-holes. Instead of material being removed and making it weaker there, instead you're replacing it with a material that's stronger. In the same way that a bunch of small little holes in a part can weaken the overall strength of that part. In the opposite direction, adding a bunch of small little pieces of something stronger can increase the overall strength of the part. With most carbon fiber products, they apply some sort of coating. If you really wanna make carbon fiber stuff and do it safely, you might wanna consider investing in some equipment to do clear coating. These fibers won't come loose because there's a clear coat over the top that completely separates you from being able to touch the actual fibers. Now there's still going to be a little risk for exposure whenever you're having carbon fiber in your parts, but if it's all encased, there's really uh, not much risk. One really interesting potential solution to this problem is what I saw at the FATUS booth at Rapid TCT a little over a year ago. They had this special form of carbon fiber where it's encased in a wrapper of a non-reinforced material. So they put all the carbon fiber in the center core, which helps the filament be more flexible and it prints easier through your 3D printer nozzles. And with filament like that, it's gonna trap all the carbon fiber on the inside and then your surfaces are gonna be nice and smooth. So maybe a potential solution that 3D printer manufacturers can adopt is to use more technologies like that to help encase those fibers on prints straight off of the printer. So in light of this new information, if you still want or need to use carbon fiber for whatever reason, there's some things you can do to protect yourself. In a lot of carbon fiber handling facilities, they'll wear a full bunny suit and gloves and a respirator and everything. Having long sleeves is also a good idea. And also handling clothing that you've worn when handling carbon fiber reinforced materials as if they're contaminated. So basically wash them when you get home. Taking a look at things under this microscope has really made me realize that there's little bits of particles that come off of everything. I'll leave links to some equipment that I personally use. So I have a gigantic HEPA filter here. So any of those airborne particles will get captured over time in that filter. So I don't have to worry about breathing it in. Even regular plastic in FDM printing can expose you to some hazards. But in general, they're really not that bad. Like take this material, for example, you can rub it all over your face and it's fine. It's a perfectly smooth surface and it's not gonna flake off pieces of anything when you're touching it. The worst that can happen with that sort of stuff is really when you're printing it. So when you're heating it up, it can release some compounds. And if you look really closely at a 3D printer, it actually smokes, even at relatively normal printing temperatures. It's just that your part cooling fan, since it's blowing on the, the hot end, it's blowing that smoke away and dissipating it before you can see it. But I run a lot of my printers with the part cooling fans off and I've noticed smoke, little wisps every now and then, especially if you're running at elevated temperatures to increase your print speeds. 